Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time in your word, Lord, about the Lord Jesus Christ. May he be exalted, Lord. May the flesh be put down. May the sins be put in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. For Jesus' sake I pray. Amen. Okay. The Gospel of John. Chapter 1. And we're going to go in verse 6. John 1, 6. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. That's John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capital L. And all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was I'm just trying to write his best up here. Was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And that's where we've been leaving off in verse nine. Now we're we're looking at the Gospel of John. And we begin with the creation, and the main focus is not John the Baptist. It's not John the disciple. It's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And we have seen Jesus as God. We have seen Jesus as the creator he is the word he is the light and what we're doing is through the gospel of john to begin we're moving ourselves here comes a forerunner of jesus john the baptist and next what we're going to do the next person on the scene will be jesus well who is jesus you go in any church any religion there's a different jesus paul tells us that there's another jesus the Jesus of the Bible is here He comes. He's walking. He's talking. He's baptized. He sleeps. He eats. He prays. Amen. He's God manifest in the light who is the Creator, who is God, who is the Word incarnate, who is that light. God manifested in the flesh that God is 100% God and God is 100% man through Jesus Christ. There's never a division. And that light, we look at, without light, there's death. You take a plant, you put it in a closet, you shut the door, there's no windows and no lights or anything in there. Within time, about two or three days, that plant will die. Man, when he dies, they say his lights went out. And without God, without the belief in the salvation of God and Jesus Christ, we have seen that hell is darkness, there's no light there. Jesus will show you the way. The light will have you to see. So, Acts 17.22. Acts, hey, there's that breeze as soon as we start. Oh. Looking pages. It feels good, but not good on the pages. <laughs> Hard time. Yeah, one class, 1722, Book of Acts. Here Paul was in Athens, and then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill, worshiping Mars, the moon, I mean the, the planet, and the god of Mars. And ye men of Athens, I perceive that all in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by, behold your devotions, I found an altar. The altar sounds good. With an inscription. To the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Now before we go any further, all right. Amen. Here's a nation of people. They are so in the dark. We and Athens, they have all gods. God of the seas, God of the sun, God of this, God of that, God. And all the gods are fighting the gods. The gods are mating with the women. The women are mating with the gods. And got women gods and goddesses and got male gods and all kinds of gods. And they say, you know what? We forgot one god. Who is it? I don't know. So let's make an altar to the un I don't know God, the unknown God. And Paul walks up to him and says, you're angry. And then he says... Him declare I unto you. 
You know what he's done? He's taking these people out of darkness and he's going to start showing them light. You see that unknown altar God over there? Well, yeah. We don't know who he is. Because Paul says, I'm going to show you him. He just acknowledged that that unknown altar, I'm going to show you who that God is. Of all the gods and goddesses, Paul says you got one thing right. You got God, but you don't even know who He is because you're in the dark. Mm. And he said, God that made the world. Now, does that sound familiar from our study of John? Creation. We went over that. I said, why do we do that? Because here we are. We're in the ninth verse of chapter 1. We've really gotten really far. But how many times has creation come up? And yet, if your Savior, if your Jesus is unable to make the earth and the moon and the stars and everything that's out there, then He's unable to save your soul because He's not God. That's right. All right, if you did come up with a Big Bang, let, let's, let's say for a moment, let's take it for granted, the Big Bang happened. Okay, after you die, what does that Big Bang do for you? you got to have somebody bury you. That, even that Big Bang's not going to bury you. But when you look at God, and here's people in darkness, Paul says, the God that made the world and all things therein. That matches John 1. And we're going to read more about it in John 1 before even Jesus shows up. So, seeing, seeing. How can you see in the dark? Remember I just said, you can't see in the dark. So, what Paul's saying, I'm showing you some light. And he's not calling them ignorant as in foolish, stupid, you guys just don't know and let me shed some light on the subject of that unknown God. That He is Lord, capital L, Jehovah, of heaven and earth, and dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Now what's the ironic phrase of that, Paul's saying? Look around Athens, they got buildings and everything to all the gods. Ephesus had a temple to Diana. There's temples to do. Every city throughout Europe, throughout the time, would have a deity to that city. And that city would have its own deity, and they would have a temple there to that deity. And Paul says, listen, you don't know who you're worshiping. Now, I'm going to tell you about the Creator God. Now, to them, yeah, we have a Creator God, but we also have a sea God. We have a God of sex. We have a God of spring. We got Paul's like, no, I'm talking about one God. He says, neither worship with men's hands. You see all these, these buildings here and statues? That's not God. That's what he's saying. As though he needed anything. Now what, what kind of God would you have if he needed something from you? If you were to walk up to God and judge and say, God, well, let me rip out my wallet. Hey, what do you need? Ten, twenties? What kind of God is that? God doesn't pray to us. And yet, God, Paul is speaking to people where their gods would say, Go down to Athenius and tell him I want his field or something. Or whatever it is. And that's the story of God's. Now we have a God that doesn't need anything. We need from Him. Seeing He giveth to all life. That's again in John chapter 1. So we have, by Paul preaching to the atheists, we have backup proof of the Gospel of John chapter 1. And John chapter 1, the, the, the Apostle is backing up what Paul is. Religious books don't do that. They, co they contradict each other. And breath and all things. And that's Genesis 2 we've already looked at. And has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. Alright? You say, Stolly, knock it off. Huh? Not where the Bible says something. <laughs> people say that we're well, all different blood. That. They say that there's colored people, there's yellow people, there's white people. Paul just said, on the inspiration of the Spirit, talking about God the Creator, we all have the same blood. Now, it may be A, B, it may be O, it may be different classifications, but our blood is blood. And in cases where if they have to use another blood type, they can do it. Emergency cases. But it would be preferred and great to use your own type. 
And also, there's a there's a religion out there, Jehovah Witnesses. We cannot get blood transfusions. It's illegal. Paul says, listen, all our blood. Mm -hmm. Now, if I got an injury right now and I start spilling blood, and I go in a hospital and there's a colored man right there next to me who's got the same blood, go for it. I have no problem. The only thing I I had with, with Tracy with her blood transfusion and I had a blood transfusion, I said, all I want you to do is make sure you test that stuff and make sure it's clean. That's the only thing I have against it. That's right. Make sure it's disease free. Then go ahead. I don't care. And we all have blood. That blood comes from Adam and Eve taking that fruit and sin, and we are sinners by mothers and fathers and grandparents and grandparents going all the way back, but in us, we have one common thing. Blood. And it's not black lives matter, not white lives matter. It's your blood. Jesus said, I mean, God said to Moses, there's life in the blood. There's blood as life. Or he said it to Noah. So, blood of all nations, of men to who dwell on all the face of the earth, and as determined by times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Now, there are bounds. And people don't want to believe that. There's European nations. There's African nations. There is the Orient. Everybody is classifying the three groups of people. Ham, Sham, and Japheth. That is the three classifications of the Bible. That's what the Bible said. Habitation. When Noah's boys left, Mount Ararat, they went to their particular areas. And God was so angry with the Hemites, he said, they, on their way to Africa, they stopped in the Promised Land, and God said, no, you got to take them out of there. That's not where they belong. And that's the Jebusites, the Hittites, and there's a long list of them. That they should seek the Lord, if happy they might feel after Him, and find Him, though he be not far from every one of us. Now, remember what we talked about last week in, in John 1, 9. We are born with the knowledge of God. He puts it in us. And that little light, we're to you get greater light by trusting in the light that God's already given us. And Paul says, listen, God's right there. But he's not in those statues. He's not in those buildings. He's in you men that have blood. It's there. You mean these people that worship, you know, polytheists and, and every God and all gods and all that? Yes, God's right there in your heart. Because let me ask you a question. With the worship of all the gods, where did they get the idea and notion there was a God? Why not take a man and lift him up like America does with the president or Democrat or Republican? Why not lift up a man? Supreme being, gods of supreme being, even their false gods, to the atheists. Well, where do they get the idea that there's a supreme god? Why are they not worshiping a big bang? You see what's in their heart. And Paul says you're ignorant, not because you have this worship, because you went the wrong way. You started taking personalities of men and women, Romans chapter 1. But, you have an altar there to that unknown God, and I'm showing you who He is. Let's read on. That they should seek the Lord, if happy they might feel after Him, and find Him. So see, God's to be found. you got to go searching. i got to write that one down. That's another one down. Excuse me one moment. I'm dealing with somebody. Acts. I'm making notes on Oh. So that's it. Oh, pardon me for a moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm dealing with a guy helping him out in that verse right there. Oh. That'll probably shed a little more darkness. But oh, okay, where was I? It might be found. I feel after to find him, though he be not far from every one of us. So that's lost people. He's talking. That's not saved people. God is very near. God is not willing that any should perish. God is long-suffering. He, right. he doesn't want everybody to go to hell. There he is. Paul is right there preaching. And so is God saying, okay, who's going to believe? Now, they may not believe this afternoon on this hill, but if they receive what Paul says, 
that's a little more light. It may be a sea. Or it may be watering. But God's there. So you got somebody who's got multiple gods. Hey, where'd you get the idea or concept of a god? Well, my church. Well, let's get away from the church for a moment. And if you talk with a Catholic, they believe many of the principles of the Bible, and you may have a saved Catholic, and they don't know it. Or if they're on the way of being saved, they just got other philosophies in their teaching. Mm -hmm. Yep. He be not far from every one of us. That's John 1.9. Mm -hmm. For in Him we live. That's our source of life. Amen. Living. The doctors did not resuscitate you. God did. It was not you. I believe, and I got scripture that thing, but not now. I believe that God has a set date in your life. Month, day, and year. Now you can make it longer. King, I can't think of his name. Hezekiah. Hezekiah, God gave him 15 more years. Mm -hmm. He says, you're going to die. Isaiah will tell me he's going to die. Set your house straight. Oh, Lord God, I really love you. I want to do right. God says, okay, give 15 years. You can die before your time. Get involved with sex that is not marriage. Mm. Get involved with liquor or smoking or anything. Get into an occupation that's hazardous. And they will tell you, that reduces your life. That's right. How did you die early? Well, you got doing something you shouldn't have really been doing. Mm -hmm. How did you get extended life? God needed you. God wanted you. God loved you. So when you say, well, how come I didn't die? How come, you know, well, and we've seen that many people. We just had a guy come up to us last week. Claimed he died twice. Really? Why? I don't know. I don't have the particular reason, but God's in charge. And that's where you've got to seek out God. So he says here, in Him we live and move. So when we move, ow, that hurts. Still, God's making you move. God's giving you, who made your knees? Who made your elbow? He's talking about the creation. He's talking about not only your creation, your body, but what is your purpose in life? God's not finished with you if you're not in the ground. Let's save your law. If you're lost, God wants you saved. He's giving you the, the, the ability to keep living that you may trust on Jesus. You're living so you can get the gospel and you can get saved. The mercy of God. Four years down at the farmer's market preaching, they don't realize it's the mercy of God that some of them God has not taken yet so that they can hear the gospel again and respond properly. And as far as us there are saved, we move and being by what is supposed to be the purpose of God, not for ourselves. And have our being. Who am I? I'm who God made. I'm unique. I am not like anybody else. And no one else is like me. The only shoot the Bible says there's only two paths here to follow. One of them, Paul says, follow me. Paul does say that when Paul does right. And the other path is to follow Jesus. Now, if you find someone who's serving and loving the Lord and doing what they're supposed to, all right, get on track with them. But as soon as they start failing, get your eyes off that path because you're going to fail. Too many people, they get their eyes on their pastor. They're so wonderful, so great. And they don't see once the pastor starts falling, starts failing, oh, because it doesn't happen just like that overnight. You don't wake up and, and oh, man, that guy is doing wrong. Okay, change. It has been subtle. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I, I, I can take you to churches right now. You stand in front of them. You say, is that a church? Really? If that's a church that had the gospel, went out knocking on doors, it was a church. And I'm not talking about here in Florida. Mm -hmm. Our being is supposed to be. Now, Revelation 4, I forget what the last verse is. It says, for the purpose we are here is to worship and praise and give honor and glory. I believe we've done that verse before. We're not here to, you know, make a living. We're not here to put all... Now, we're supposed to make a living. We're supposed to work. But I'm going to be the chief CEO of this company. No, that's not your purpose. Right now, my job is very restricted as far as politics and religion. Now, i got to walk on ice. 
But I want to go in there and witness. But I want to do it properly. But I can't go in there and say, well, I'm going to do it because I'm a Christian. Then, yeah, you can get out of here too. Mm. Certain also of, of your own poets. This is where all the poetry come from. Socrates and all them have said, for we are also his offspring. Ooh, look at that. You will find in Athens, you will find in their, po their poets, in their writings, we are the children of God. Amen. But you don't know who God is. And that's the Catholic you're talking to. That's the Jehovah Witness you're talking to. They may not know. And we've got to be light as Paul is being light and respectfully show them the error of their way and bring them to the correct way. We can't expect everybody, especially in America today, oh, they know about God, they know about Jesus, so they're going to get saved at this point. After all, this vacation Bible, hey, all the kids got saved. Did you talk about Jesus? Did you talk about God? Did you talk about the Bible? No, we had fun and games. They know about Jesus and God. No, they don't. you got to be careful. The people in Athens did not know God. Now, how do you know someone who's involved in religion? Judge not needs to be judged, sir. Jesus wouldn't do that. That's religion. That tells me, and you know, straight. I now tell him, you don't read your Bible and you don't study your Bible, and that makes me. But you have it because he did, and he has. Paul is standing on a hill, preaching to the people. This is street preaching in the Bible. He is not in the church. He's standing at a rock. He's he's in front of this statue, saying, "Look at this thing behind me, people." Paul is street preaching. And somebody will come up to me a bunch of ones in time, I'm street preaching, standing on the sidewalk with a bunch of people doing their business as the people in Athens are. Oh, you can't find that in the Bible. You never studied Paul's life. You never studied Jesus. Jesus stood out in the boat and said, hey, bring me out a little bit further. Okay, that's good enough right there. The acoustics are great. And preach to the people on the beach. That's street preaching. To a bunch of people that don't know. It's wonderful. It's great. For in the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. So, you can... Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> All right, so what we have now, we are close to the areas of Rome. You can take the passage we read. I'm trying to help us witness the people. You can take the passage we read, and you can apply that to a Roman Catholic. They say, well, what are your idols? What are your, you know, your statues? Be respectable. That statue, well, those are aids to worship. Well, can I show you something? Paul says, hey, look at, look at this statue. It's called the unknown God. And you read down, and you read down, and then he says... Gold, silver, stone, graven by art of man's device. We're not to think God's like that. You're not to think Jesus is wood and hanging on that cross. Paul said it's wrong. And if you do it respectfully before the person, and if that person is willing and has a heart that's really seeking God, they're going to like, ooh, i never seen that. Because you never open your Bible, but don't say that. And you get somebody's hardcore, dedicated to their religion. Ah, that's just your interpretation. No, no. Fine. But Paul is dealing with a bunch of men who worship all kinds of gods. They have no light, very little light. And he's witnessing to them. And we have seen everything that's in John 1 that Jesus Christ is. So he's definitely witnessing Jesus. That's all Paul's ministry is about. It's Jesus Christ. So the idols, the aids of worship, Paul says they're no good. Turn off that light. Now, we went to an art museum yesterday. There's nothing wrong with that. We stayed away from the nudies. And there wasn't anything really statues on that. And they got lights on them. The whole room, it was making my eyeballs wet. There's focus on those paintings. 
Wow, look at this painting. Now, where we are in Athens, if you think about it as an art dealer, they got men and women, broken arms and body parts hanging out and all that stuff like that. You turn off that light, get it off that statue, and here's not an artificial light, but here's the light Jesus Christ. Let me show him. And isn't that what we've been talking about? Paul is turning off the lights on all these gods, and he doesn't have to flip a switch. He said, here's the light of Jesus we've been studying in John 1. So, watch verse 30. At the times of this ignorance. What's the ignorance? All these gods, the god of gold, silver, stone, art, raven, that's all ignorance. God winked at. God's like, oh. I'll tell you what. I will send them prophets. I will send them apostles. I will send them disciples. I will judge them by their heart and the conscience that we studied about last week. The revelation of what I showed them. Now the Gentiles are not judged here by the law. The law was given to the Jews. What they're judged upon is their conscience. Alright, what did you do with the light that I gave you? Now some of them went full force into the idolatry and the worship of gods and goddesses. And there will be some there like, alright, they teach gods and goddesses in the public school. I'm talking about in a... Oh, I don't really believe that. You know, that's just baloney. I believe there's one God. I don't know who He is. But I don't believe that baloney. Like evolution, theory. I don't believe that baloney. No, so I believe in God the Creator. Now, there is no Bible at this time. There's no word. And the people who have been given light by God say, you know what, I don't believe that. Stuff of faith. But now, what Paul is saying, hmm, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Something about it. And now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Now, now that you have the word, Athens, Athens, What's God telling you right now? Now that you heard my preaching, what's God? You got you must, you must repent right now after you hear. So when somebody hears the gospel, before they hear the gospel, okay, you can, I don't know. So what about those people who never heard the gospel? I don't know. God is going to give them light. God has given them light. What they do with that light, I don't know. Okay? All right? You're talking to me. You worry about the people in Africa. All right? I just told you right now that Jesus Christ saves. He's able to save your soul. If you put your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ upon that cross, you can die and go to be with God forever and not go to hell. What about the people in Africa? No, no, no. It's about you now. I have told you the gospel, and now the Bible declares you must repent. Now, you can repent of God and get right with God, or you can think about all the Africans you want or whoever you're thinking about. That's not going to get you saved. It's that moment. All right? So you're worried about these people in Afghanistan? And what, what about? All right. Repent. Get right. Go ye in all the world. Learn the Bible. Go over there and tell them about the gospel if you're so worried about it. Which they're not. But now that person has had that light, what does Paul say? Repent. Does it say do good work? Does it go, go baptize? He says repent. Salvation is repentant. Repent is, hey, I've sinned. I need to turn. I need to be sorry. God, if I don't do what you tell me to do, I'm going into hell. Because I'm not going to do what you told me to do, and I need to do what you told me to do. Repent is not in the churches today. And it's definitely in, not in major of the VBSs. And many of them, many of them thought, well, if you just say this prayer, we'll give you a tootsie roll and a little good act so you can go home and tell your parents. That's not salvation. Mm -hmm. And when you get somebody on the street, well, wouldn't you like to have Jesus come into your heart? Well, yeah, that sounds good. Wouldn't you just like to have the peace? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Would you like to say this prayer? Sure. I can say it with you, for you, you know. You know, Lord God save my soul. Lord God save my soul. That's not salvation. You got to repent. You got to come down. And I tell people, and there's been a few people that have come to the Lord saving, 
by, by, by God using me as a vessel, I say, listen, what you're going to do is you're going to ask God to save your soul right now. And then I want you silently. Because this is no, we don't talk men to men about this. And I want you to have a moment with, with the Lord right now. I want you to pray to God about the sins you've done. Not all, you may not get them all what you want. And you get him at, he's received Christ as Savior. And you got him and God alone. And if he's really believed on God as a Savior, and you got him a quiet time with his sin, don't you think God's going to start spilling the beans? Because I will lay at night, sometimes I can't sleep. I'll be laying there saying, God, what exactly is it? I wish you'd been patient so long. I don't even finish. And I get angry at God at that moment because He does not let me finish in patience. Oh. And there are other sins which I want. But if I'm a child of God, I say, God, what sins are, are affecting you and me? And He names them. If you got someone who just got saved, and you get the idea for them to repent, say, this is all by yourself, alone. Don't say it out loud. And I don't know what happened. I don't know what they did. I, I'm not listening. But I guarantee if, it, if it's true salvation, I guarantee God's saying, what about this? What about that? What about this? And then you can walk away as I did April 21st, 1987. Everything from April 20th and to my birth is all gone. Did I repent of every sin? No. And there are still times today that God will say, come up to me and say, what about that? You're done. Now, all my sins are on the blood, but at that moment, if I have not specifically put it on, I say, Lord, I know I was saved. I know I've been washed as a child of God, but I don't know about that one sin. In case it hasn't, because I have not confessed it, I will confess that sin. Now, Satan comes to me and says, Look, what about that sin right there? Under the blood. Get away from me, Satan. You deal with God. God, he's naming something that you do not remember, 1 John 1 9. Now, I'm telling you, when we got saved, all our sins are washed, but there may be times that like God will make you or want you to confess that one sin. Because you may be still doing it. But Paul says, repent. Repent. That's missing. It used to be, when I first got saved, when I got looking in the sign ministries with my family, and that, it used to be signs all over the place. Turn or burn. And that's correct. You don't see many of them. And you will find men, ask Tracy, we have heard men and preachers, uh, men and yeah, men and preachers in pulpits make fun of that expression, turn or burn. What's turn mean? It means repent. See, repent means you're going down, oh, here I am, I'm sinning, I'm sinning, I'm joining sin, I'm doing all this stuff, I'm against God. I come to Calvary. At that moment at Calvary, I want to believe God. I want to believe on Jesus Christ. i got to take a new turn. The Bible calls it a new creature. Now, are you going to walk away from Calvary in your flesh, completely innocent, completely washed, completely, you're never going to sin again? Absolutely not. It's with the heart, with your heart. You know, Lord, I've not been doing that. It's all been, should have been about your son. I'm sorry. Right now, I'm changing my life from religion, changing my life from science, changing my life from education. I'm going to bring it to Jesus. That's a change it. And these sins I am putting under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now God's going to leave you a couple sins to mess with your life. To remind you that every dog has a flea. That flea reminds that dog, you're a dog. And God will give us that one sin in life. We'll battle, we'll cry over and we're sick of it. Still got you marking the sinner though. It doesn't. It? Yes God. Brings you down your knees, doesn't it? Brings you in tears. That's how I want you. You see, if God didn't give us aches and pains and troubles, we wouldn't pray for it to Him. We wouldn't ask Him. It's a shame when we don't talk to God. And go on, it says, Because He has appointed a day in which He will judge the world in righteousness. Alright, look at that. Paul is preaching, there's judgment day coming. If you don't repent, judgment day is coming. He can't preach that. It's going to offend people. Tough baloney. <laughs> I preach at the streets, hell, 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 hell. You ruined my Saturday. Is that what they say? Why don't you preach more heaven? You get saved, you come to the Bible study, and you'll hear about heaven. Right now, hell, judgment. Hell, get right. You 
Jesus says. Now, by that man, I wonder who that is. Religions have another man. A religion can fill that man with any name. I'm not going to get into religion now. But any man. You know how many names these people in Athens have as gods? I have a book at home this thick of the Roman Greek gods. Their name, their title, and what they did. Paperback. Paul is telling all those names. Zeus. I can't even think, thank God, I can't think of uh, Zeus is the one that comes to mind. Astrid. Mary. All those gods. You know what God, you know what Paul says? That man. Who is who has John 1 been pointing to? It said John the Baptist, right? But he's not that light. Paul is telling them. Neptune is not that light. He's not that man. Jesus. Jesus. That man whom he hath ordained. Who? Who we've been talking about? God. God ordained Jesus Christ. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men. These things have I written unto you, first John, that you may know you have eternal life. Ask someone of religion, science, or education. Do you know where you're going to go when you die? And if they say heaven, this is how do you know? Do you know for surety? They don't. I do. I've had a few times in my life where I could have and should have died. I knew where I was going. When I was at Gardner's Lake and, and I, I was about to drown in, in that, that floating thing where you, you sit and dive off and all that, I, I'm reaching out to that. I, I, I know I'm going under. And I said, God, you know what? I have not been living right my Christian life. And Lord, I'm just sorry. If I would have taken my last breath of water for the rest of my life and not be here today, I knew at that moment, living out of the will of God, I was going, I was going to God. When I'm laying in the hospital room a couple times, I'm saying, Lord, is this it? Okay. Take care of my family. That's all I ask. Let me go. I'm ready. I'm not afraid. And when you come, and you will have those times in your life, you will think, I'm at that moment. And you say, let it come. That's peace. And then when and you open up your eyes and your family's looking at you, it's like, oh, damn. Yeah. Unfortunately, when that happened to me with, with that yeah. infection I had, I was actually like in a depression for a month and you thought God was going to take me. Yeah, and I was in so much pain that I did want to go. Oh. And when I didn't go and I was still in that pain recovering, I'm like, Lord, why did you just take me home? And like you already said, God has a reason. But yeah, sure. but yeah. see, the see yeah. Tracy got assured by the peace. Like, and then, as much as she loves me, as much as I love her, when she see my I ugly face, to to Jesus more than like, I wanted to stay here. That's not the bearded man I wanted to see. <laughs> but that's that's the peace you get. And when you're laying on your deathbed, and you know what, <laughs> you got trouble. Now there's two reasons. One, you're not living right with Christ, you're saved. Or another, you're not saved. When I almost died in Gardner's Lake, I was afraid because I had not done what God told me to do. I was out of His will. I won't even get into that now. But a lot of times Christians step out of the will of God. So, assurance comes with salvation. There's no question at all. There is no... I fear, only thing I fear of death, I don't want to burn, I don't want to be tortured. I've sat in a dentist chair and the morphine or whatever they do wears off. I do not want to go in the tortured hands of a religion. I do not want to burn. I do not want to go in a building that has collapsed. I do not want to have to die saying, I can see my, my, the people trying to save me, but I can't reach and they can't hear me. I don't want to die that way. But dying... Even so, Lord Jesus, just don't bring the pain, please. Let me put my head on the pillow and close my eyes. In that moment, 
but passing from the body and present with the Lord. I can just imagine what that moment is. That moment that Tracy, for sure, would have, and me, open our eyes and see Jesus. Whoa. Or her open her eyes and see the bearded wonder. <laughs> And if she would have said, I, I wish it was Jesus, I'd understand. Hey, you want to be insulted? There are, listen, my family who's died gone home to Jesus already, I envy them because I want to be there. My grandma could hardly walk. She, she had the very close veins and she was sore and she was heavy and, she, and the nursing home was just miserable. God taking her home was wonderful. That was what? That was even before Rachel was born. And look how many sufferings and troubles and problems I've had since then. But then again, she's lived a whole full life of pain, sorrow, and suffering. God has a reason. And since then, we need to say, God, why am I here? And I don't mean, why, why, you, why do you want me here, Lord? For a reason. You brought me back. Here I am. I open up my eyes this morning. Why? Why? And I prayed a while ago. I said, I'm going to reach cashiers. I'm going to try to get gospel tracks out to cashiers. You know the Lord honored that in my life? Like I said, we got two stories of cashiers that would ask them for. But you know, what, you know what happens when we go to a store with cashiers? i got to fight these two. Because they they got the gospel track ready. they got the gospel track ready. To get, and it's like, okay. It goes to all their accounts. If, if I don't have the gospel track, Tracy has the gospel track. If I don't have, the, she don't have the gospel track. Rachel's got the gospel track. Or we'll look at our hands. All three of us have got gospel tracks. You know. So assurance unto all men, all men, all men. Now stay there. Let me read to you John one nine. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So we are in John 1 and Acts chapter uh, 17. You say, well, we're not really far away in Acts 17. Well, I didn't expect to get far away. So, assurance of all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Who's that man? The man that came out of the grave. What does the gospel include? Resurrection. No resurrection? No salvation. That's in Romans chapter 10, which won't go. Romans 9 and 10. And 11 and 12. you got to believe that Christ arose from the grave. You can't believe He's still dead. And, and you know where all these other gods are? They're still dead, some of them, in Athens. So, resurrection and repent. And Acts 17 are included, are a must for witnessing to people for, for salvation. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, when they heard the resurrection of the dead, a dead man, a man came out of the grave. You ready? Everybody will believe Jesus. Ready? Some mock. Have anybody ever mocked at us preaching the gospel that Jesus Christ died? Risen from the grave? The first thing that, that the Holy Spirit says, I want you to record something. Write this down. All right. Many people got saved. No. Paul, get your eraser out. Erase that. Well, great people. Well, pe Paul, write first some mock. Well, that's not good. But that's what happens. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go the way up. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. You see, the Bible is negative first. And that's what man cannot stand. A lot of times people go, oh, it's, it's a hot day out here. It's just so hot. I say, oh, it feels so cool. It's so nice. No, positive thinking didn't work. Let's go back to it's hot and miserable. You know who the first positive person in the Bible was? The serpent. Yea, as God said. That's the first positive statement. And it questioned the Word of God. So Paul, right first, that people mock. So when you witness to people, when you tell people, they're going to mock you, some of them. They're going to make fun of you. They're not going to invite you to places anymore. They're going to talk behind your back. That's Bible. When somebody comes up to you, judge not, least you judge. 
They don't want to be mocked. They rather be the mockers. And like those big black markers, they stink. <laughs> and others said, all right, there's others. We will hear thee again of this matter. Paul just planted seed. There are people who yet will be watered. Look at that. Seed has been, people say, hey, I want to hear that. And we get those people too. They go, to, I want to hear more. Wow, I tell me more. I to you every time. Give me a gospel track. Give me Aww, two. Can I have one? We had a husband and wife, was it? Last week or the week before. Tracy gave him one of those, uh, the, the mockley, don't go to hell yeah. card. He took my they were fighting. free card. Give me one. They were fighting, so oh, Tracy that. gave him both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there are people who are going to hate you, and there are going to be people who are going to live, love you, and they're going to want to listen. So Paul departed from among them. Why? Because there's others there who can do what Paul has done. I have planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. Paul saying, you know what? They want to hear? I'll send more people. But I've done my part. See, you cannot go and say, oh, I'm going to save this town. I'm going to save this city. No, go in there and preach the gospel. Be it a seed bearer or a water water. Water, water. And let God give the increase. Because if, if Paul were to turn around and go back in there and let's say a thousand people from Athens got saved, well, look how great I am. Oh, I was, I was at this church in Athens at the unknown altar and 150 people got saved. No, see, it's let somebody else go in there and do the work. It's, it's part of the harvest. The people who plant the seeds or may not be the people that pick the seeds. I mean, pick the plants. When you got lettuce in California, there may be Mexicans that plant the lettuce seeds, and there may be other Mexicans who come and gather the lettuce. It may not be the same. It may be some the same. You may have the opportunity to be the planter of seed and the water of water, but who knows, maybe someone else in between time. When you've got somebody who has received the gospel, I don't mean as trusted in Christ, has taken that gospel track, has read that gospel track, has listened to you with an open Bible, you've either planted or you're on the means of water. Don't be so quick. I've never seen Tracy out there planting bulbs or seeds, and then she puts it in the ground and starts peeling that seed up to get the plant up. Now, I tried that with tomatoes. It don't work. It don't work that way. And science are doing it with their science to produce all this junky vegetables and fruits. And look, look at our health conditions today. It's miserable. When they heard that the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again in this matter. Paul departed from among. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed. So Paul watered. I mean, Paul planted, Paul watered, and God gave the increase that afternoon. Well, I preached to all these people, and many walked away and made fun of me on that. That's Bible. Some people say, well, i got to go to work. I, I don't need that right now. You don't know what's going to happen there. And if they do like that, say, listen, and this is where you need to have a notebook. Mine's, mine's, can I get your first name? And write his name down in the parable. And write right next to it, you know, question mark. I don't know. He's lost. Or he's saved. Question mark. I don't know. And add that to your prayer list. My prayer list is building and building with the flea market. There will be people that mock. There will be people say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. And there will be people that believe. Among the which was diocesis. The Areogite. All right. Do you know who Dionysus is? You will know when you get to heaven. He got saved. Imagine never reading, studying your Bible, and a guy comes up to you and says, "Hi, my name is Dionysus." Uh, I remember that name. Oh yeah, it was a breezy Wednesday morning, and we studied Acts 17. Was it? Is that? Yeah, that's me. There are Christians that are going to go to heaven and they're not going to know the names of the Bible. 
That's why I put in my Facebook a daily Bible trivia so get people thinking in the Bible. And a woman named Daremius. Daremius. Do you know who she is? Demarius? You'll know who she is. Well, my pastor didn't mention my name and others with him. He names two people and doesn't name all, all the others. So you say, well, my name wasn't mentioned. Yeah, that's Bible too. So you see what Acts 17 has done. Is done. There will be people who worship other gods. There will be people who will listen to you as you preach. You're to repent. You're to believe on God. You're to turn away from that religion. There will be people who are going to mock you. There are going to be people who say, hey, I want to hear more, but not now or now. There will be people that believe. You will be named. Now, all your names go in the Lamb's Book of Life, yes. But for the preacher to say your name all the time, it may not happen. You know, there are, when the Bible gives, I think it's twice, the name of the, the disciples and apostles of Jesus, you know, Peter, James, John, Andrew, and all them. There are some of those disciples you don't even ever hear their name again. You know? And according to the Bible, that's okay. I mean, I have had my own name personally in a church from the pulpit. I have had my name removed and given to somebody else as a credit. Well, well God knows who did it. He recorded it. You're alive. It don't bother me. It used to bother me. It used to, but I've grown in the Lord. But how about this? How about one day the rapture's happened. We've been dead or alive. The rapture's happened. Mm -hmm. And we stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible says we're going to get a new name anyway. So yeah. We get called up to the judgment seat of Christ. I didn't know that. Yep. And all our works are laid out. Wood, hay, and stubble, everything that's mm -hmm. junk and all that burns away. If there's there's gold, silver, precious stone in the pile. That's rewards. Now let's say that one that gold, silver, precious you didn't get named. Your name never made, wasn't printed, was never said. Imagine Jesus picking up those gold, that silver, and that precious stone in the form of a crown. And looks at you and says, Well done. And maybe he'll give you your name. Maybe at that point we get our new name. That's a lot better than hearing a man say, oh, I'd like to give the praise to this John Soap. Everybody bow down to John. Now stand up for John Soap because he's just so... Let God do that. Because at the moment you do that, you're going to be on your knees at the feet of Jesus. Say, oh, God, I hope I have some gold and silver. I hope, I hope I didn't ruin that. First, uh, second John. And that moment when he falls away, he, he tells you to get up. And those nail pierced hands are holding maybe hopefully your crown. And have him say, Well done. Amen. Thou good I, I just want well done. Never mind a good and faithful servant. I want well done. Because there are times if you do it for the praise of man, the Bible says, you do it so the pastor will mention, you will do it because these people will talk about you. You do it so you can get your name in print. God says, You've already got your reward. That's wood or hay or stuff, that burns up. Do for the honor and glory of God. That's right. And Lord God, I just thank you for this study of long, long time ago. In a place called Athens. Before a statue of an unknown God. That Paul shed light on who that God was. And we've heard that people mocked. we heard that people went away. And we heard there were brothers and sisters added to us, Lord. We never met them. For they are the children of God just as much as we are by the saving grace of the Calvary of Jesus, just like we are. Help us to walk each and every day, Lord God, for you, for your honor. More gold, more silver, more precious stone. And for Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay.